high five, say hello. Welcome to Journey. My name is Ashley and we are so glad you are here with us today, whether you are here in person or online. At Journey, our hope is to give you a place where you experience a fresh, enjoyable connection with God and a community of people to do life with. As your church family, we want to stay connected with you. So if you are new to Journey, the best way we can help you get connected within the church is through joining a Journey group or the J team. For more information on that, we invite you to fill out our connection card. You can fill out a connection card available at our Welcome Center. We are honored to be your church family and look forward to connecting with you. Another Journey Group semester is starting up with this fall semester. Journey Groups are a great way to find community within the church. Right now, you have an opportunity to check out the different types of Journey Groups we have at our group fair happening today in the main hallway after each service. There are a lot of great journey groups meeting this semester, and we hope you get connected and build relationships. Are you someone who is new or wanting to get more involved at Journey? We would like to invite you to attend your journey happening today after each service in our Welcome Center. Your journey takes place after every service, every Sunday, and is designed to help you learn more about who we are as a church and what we're all about. It's also the best place to start for anyone who wants to get involved and join the J team. We are excited to see what gifts God has given you and look forward to seeing you after the service. Thank you so much for being a part of Journey this morning and we pray today's message is a blessing. All right, how's everybody doing, everybody good? Yeah, 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 we do welcome everybody who's watching online. If you're watching online, we're grateful for you. And the guys at the Sterling Correctional Facility, would you guys welcome them? Grateful, grateful for you. Yep, yep, yep. All right, all right, all right. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day, all right? I'm going to jump into our message for today. We are uh, ending our series on rhythms and roots. And uh, just a good, I think a good word for you today about procrastination. Anybody here uh, good at procrastinating? I'm good at procrastinating. Anybody here good at procrastinating? Some of y'all are so good at procrastinating, you're going to raise your hand at lunch today. Like, <laughs> that's good right there. I got stacks of books in my life that I got to order through, uh, look through and organize. I've been trying to organize them for years. I have receipts in my office that I need to process, and I have thank you cards for Christmas that I still have not written. I'm so sorry. I've not written those yet. I am so grateful. But I, yeah, I just, I just, I procrastinate. And I'm not proud of my procrastinating nature. Now, we can get away, all right? We can get away with waiting to organize books and process receipts and even send out thank yous for Christmas. But there are some things we should not wait to do, and I made a list, all right? I I don't think we should wait to pull the weeds. Pull them, pull them now before they become a problem, all right? I don't think you should wait to change your oil. Some of y'all need to listen to that. Some of you, hey, I don't think you should wait to clip your toenails. Just saying, that's a big mistake right there. Don't wait to pay your taxes. I got this from a mom uh, that I know. She said, from my own experience, you should not wait to get a bucket when your daughter says she thinks she's going to throw up. Don't wait to eat that cereal you poured your milk on, all right? Especially if it's life cereal. Because that life, that, and by the way, this will preach, life gets messy when you let it soak. All right, I'm just telling you, like, that cereal gets messy, gets nasty, all right? Hey, another, from a coach to parents, uh, please do not wait to pick up your kid from school after a track meet. Because I've been there for 14 hours with your kids, all right? And if the track meet's over, I don't want to spend an hour at the school waiting for you to get yourself to the school to pick them up. Don't wait to put on sunscreen. Don't wait to drink coffee in the morning. Yeah. Mm. Woo! It's good. Don't wait to take a vacation. Some of y'all need, some of y'all need to take your day off tomorrow. All right, if you got the day off, take your day off, sleep in and don't feel guilty. Don't wait to save for retirement. Don't wait to call the doctor. Don't wait to show love. Don't wait to forgive. And there's some other things we should not wait to do. I was studying 1 Peter. And I was studying 1 Peter, anticipating the end of this series. 
and wanted to talk to you about procrastination, all right? I wanted to uh, spend a little time because I see in 1 Peter, uh, real quickly, 1 Peter, I see three things we should do right now. Okay, you guys ready? I'm just going to jump into the passage. Uh, 1 Peter was written by Peter, the guy you know from the Bible. And uh, there are some technical issues here, all right? You're getting it figured out. There we go. It's happening. There it is right there. All right. So uh, Peter was, uh, the letter of Peter was written by 1 Peter. And uh, written, 1 Peter was written by the guy Peter, you guys know. And Peter, it was Christ, one of Christ's best friends. He's the one who betrayed him. All right. In this passage, he's been talking to them about living a holy life. He's been talking to them about uh, how to be men and women of God. Okay. But there's some things he talks about that have a sense, and it all has a sense of urgency. And it starts with the very first word. Okay. Now, 1 Peter, we're going to go study 1 Peter 3, 13 through 22. But I want to start the very first word. Okay. Because the passage starts with the word, what's this word? Now. Now, 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 Peter is making an important point. I've been teaching. He said, he said, I've been teaching on some important things. I've been teaching you how to do all these important things and live a holy life in a sinful world. But there are some things that he wants them to live out now, today. So he starts the passage by saying, now. And I, want, I believe he wants us to take note of these things too and put them into action today. All right? Today is not the day to procrastinate. All right? Today, today, we are done procrastinating, right? Are we done procrastinating? We're done procrastinating, right? All right? Today's the day not to procrastinate. We're going to clip our toenails. We're going to clip our toenails, right? We're going to drink that coffee, all right? And we're going to get to it right now. Because I believe we are living in the days of God's patience. I believe Jesus Christ could come back at any moment. And the things we are looking at today are game changers. Do you all know there are 120,000 people living around us right now in Greeley, Colorado, and a lot of them are not saved. There are 2,400 residents at the Sterling Correctional Facility, and a lot of them are not saved. And it is time for us to do what we can do right now to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ so people's eternities can be changed. You all ready? Okay, so now, we, so now he starts off by saying, now. Let me jump into the rest of the passage, okay? Now, verses 13 and 14. Now, who is there to harm you? Look at this. If you are zealous for what is good, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. One of the things, one of the things we need to be doing right now is we need to be zealous for what is good. It's going to be there. I know it. I have faith. We're going to be, what are we going to be? For what is what? Good. Zealous for what is good. Now, we crave a lot of things that are bad for us, all right? Coffee and donuts, sugar, Doritos. My favorite are the Cool Ranch Doritos. Oh, those are so good. Pringles. Once you pop, I cannot stop. But by the way, when they designed Pringles, could they have thought about like a human being's hands fitting in there and getting the rest of them? Because you got to be committed for those last five Pringles, man. You got to go for it. You got to go for it. And then I'm like, and I go just, I go caveman. Those last five, I, I just dump it. I just drink the Pringles. And here's the thing about Pringles is like, I mean, I, I like seriously, I, I will open it at the can up and I think I'm just going to have five. And the next thing I know, the can is empty. But the tomb is empty. So there's hope, all right? There's grace. All right, here we go. We crave things that are bad for us. And in, and in all seriousness, we all know people who crave drugs, alcohol, pornography. There are some people who actually crave stress. They thrive on stress. People who crave power. But listen, one of the things we need to do right now is we need to be zealous for good stuff, for what is good. Let me give you two things that I want us to be zealous for as a church. The first is more love for God. I want to be zealous to love God more. I want to have a relationship with him, a better understanding of his word, a sustaining prayer life, and a heart of worship. One of the things we're doing here is starting next week, a week from Monday, we're starting 21 days of prayer, all right, twice a year. In January, we do 21 days of prayer and fasting. You get off easy this time. It's just prayer, 21 days of prayer. And so a week from Monday at 6.30 every morning, we're going to be right here Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, 6.30 to 7.15, praying and worshiping. And on Saturdays, for you people who aren't as spiritual, we're going to move it to 8.30. Go 8.30 to 9.15. 
But I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you whether you can physically get here or not. I'd love for you. I would love for this room to be full, people praying at that time in the morning. But if you can't, I want to challenge you to join us. Join us as, wherever you are, all right? 6.30, 7.15, we put, the way to do it, you can do it at home. You can do it on the way to work. The way we do it here is we put on worship music, all right? And you pray out loud. And you pray, in, you pray with that worship music going, okay? All right? We're going to start that. But that's a way for us to develop more love for God. Also, journey groups, all right? We've got journey groups going on right now that are, that are signing up for, you can sign up for them right now. I want to encourage you to get a part of a journey group, okay? Because in all of our journey groups, we do ESPN. We do encouragement, scripture, prayer, and then a next step, okay? And so there's lots of incredible opportunities out there, okay? You can, you can, there's classes, there's Bible studies, there's, 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 there's women, unique Blessed women's studies and men's studies. And I've even got a group for guys who want to get stronger in 30 days, all right? And so you want to sign up for that, um, whatever you want to do. But listen, we're trying to develop more love for God and then also more love for people. I want, us, I want us as a church to be zealous for what is good. And one of the things that is good is loving people. All right, we're going to love people really, really well. All right, I want to challenge you, serve someone today. Love someone today. Lead someone to Jesus today. Now, Journey, as you know, we are committed to going to heaven and taking as many people with us as possible, okay? And here's what we ask of our members. If you want to be a part of Journey Christian Church, you are involved, you are invested, and you're inviting. That's it. That's it. If you want to be a member of Journey Christian Church, that's it. You're involved, you're invested, you're inviting, all right? You're involved in what we're doing, okay? Let me start with investing first, okay? This is where we invest our lives and our resources in this ministry, and I want, to, I want to give you some, all right? Because, because you already long for what is good. You long for it. You give. Those of you who have given, I want you to understand that one of the things you did this week is you fed the, the entire staff at the Sterling Correctional Facility. All right? We went on, yeah, 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 yeah. I am so excited about this work, so excited about this work. We've been trying for, since, for three, we've been trying since 2019 to get a campus going. And we are getting, we're going to launch a campus at the Sterling Correctional Facility. And guys, our, whole, our approach is this. Our approach is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been talking to him for a year, right? And so these DVDs are trickling in, but it's about to ramp up, all right? We're about to go big, all right? So, um, but, uh, so because of your investment, though, we, so our, whoop, 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 stop. Okay, so. So our approach is holistic, all right? We're going to minister to the guys there, all right? We're going to minister to the guys' families and kids, all right? So here's the deal. Here's what's going to happen, all right? Once we get rolling, we're going to tell those guys in there. Well, Doug's going to tell them, hey, CIY's coming up. If your kids want to go to CIY, here's how they sign up. We're going to let their kid. we're going to make sure their kids can go to CIY with our kids, all right? Go to camp with our kids, all right? And we're going to make sure their wives know, because it's a men's facility. Make sure their wives know, hey, there's a women's event coming up, and if you want to come, it is paid for. The people of Journey are paying for you to come to this women's event, right? We're going to serve these people. So we're going to serve the men, serve their families. We're going to serve the staff, all right? And we're going to serve those in transitional housing. We, we baptized a guy this morning from transitional housing, all right? It's already happening. And then, and then we're going to decrease the recidivism rate, the amount of people who are going back into prison, all right? We're going to re- decrease that by, by having a ministry that helps serve them really, really well, okay? All right, so, so trying to minister to the staff, we went this week twice to feed them. I'm going to show you some of the amazing J-teamers who went, all right? All right, this is some of the J-teamers that went. Pictures are coming right now. I know it. I feel it in my soul. I'm going to name it and claim it, all right? This is the, uh, this is the Monday night crew. All right, the Monday Night Crew, these are all J-teamers here that went and served. And this is Brother Dog. I'll introduce you, introduce you to him in a second. This is the team. The next team is the team that went Friday night. Team went Friday night. We went and served and had an, an amazing experience and handed out some good barbecue, right? And God brought us Doug right here, Doug Piget. And Doug, um, uh, Doug's an amazing man. I spent two days with Doug this week. We went down to Colorado Springs and got some training for doing a prison ministry. And uh, he's an amazing singer. Man of God, you're going to meet him. I'm going to have him preach here uh, coming up soon. And... Uh, uh, God has brought us together. And Doug, Doug uh, spent 30 years, 30 years, got out 90 days ago? May 16th, May 16th he got out. And uh, yeah. And that's his, that's his story to tell. With Grace, I want to just mention that, but it's your story to tell, okay? You're going to tell a story, all right? But when you want to, all right? Because we see you as our brother in Christ. All right? And we see you as just a, a blessing from God. All right? And we see you for who you are, man. You're an incredible man of God. He brought his friend here, Brother Baines. We're grateful to have you here too. What a blessing to have you here. So I, I don't know if you guys know about the correctional system. You cannot, in Colorado, you cannot go back into a facility unless you've been out three years. This, this man is so regarded that at his parole hearing, he was sentenced to life. He was not supposed to get out. At his parole hearing, the warden spoke on his behalf. 
and said, this man needs to be out. In fact, he spoke so much that that he told him to be quiet. Stop. You're going to talk me back into this place. <laughs> like, be quiet. <laughs> but yeah, but he, he spoke on his behalf, and they have such regard for him that they're letting him go back in as a chaplain for the Department of Corrections. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, all right? And this is one of the reasons you invest, all right? Because like I told you about our budget, we're trying to meet our budget, right? But we're praying that God will provide enough resources for us to hire him as our campus pastor to go in there and represent us. And that's the plan. So if one of you guys has a check and you want to give it to us for his salary, we will take care of it right away. But we're praying. God's providing it, right? Doug, God's providing it. We already know. It's already happening. But, um, but listen, this is why you give. You give. So stuff like that. And by the way, also, we have a worship team in there. There's Mo and Ray and John. And we bought them guitars because you have to have a guitar to lead worship. Because here's what's going to happen. Let me tell you what's going to happen. When we launch this service and get live stream, and when we live stream, at that point, we'll be, I think, uh, uh, unless I'm missing something with Ark, with Ark Valley, we'll be the only church right now live streaming their services into a prison in Colorado. Okay? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so what's going to happen is this. What's going to happen is this is we got three guys in there that we bought instruments for because you can't be a worship minister without an instrument. We bought them instruments, all right? And we're going we're gonna to get them in there so they get checked out. They, they got sh- to make sure nothing's hidden in those guitars, all right? But, but what's going to happen is this, is John and his team are going to be leading worship. Doug's going to be there preaching and doing his thing. And then they're going to flip a switch, and I'm going to come in, live streaming. And we're going to preach a message, all right? This is not going to happen every week, but most weeks, right? I'll be preaching, and then Doug will stand up and take confessions and lead, Christ, lead people to Christ. And it, it's going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. So there you go. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so, so I'm just saying that, because, and I'll stop there. Because here's the thing. We long for that because it's good. It's good, and it's not just about us, all right? We gotta love people really, really well, okay? So we're invested in their lives, we're involved in their lives, and we're inviting them to the feet of Jesus Christ because he has the power to change their lives. If we're not preaching Jesus, we're preaching nonsense. They need Jesus Christ, okay? So first thing, today, let's long for what is good. Next thing, next thing is this, all right? We're gonna, we're gonna stop, today, we're gonna stop living in fear. Okay, this is what Peter says, all right? Come on, come on, verse 16 through 18. Right here, right here. Having a good, con- okay, so, um, so let me give you the context here, okay? So the first part of the verse is this, okay? Now who is, uh, da, 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 da. sorry, 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 sorry. So I'm not, I didn't, so here we go. Now who is there to harm you if you're zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sakes, you will be blessed, okay? And we're picking up the thought here, okay? Having a good, con- da, 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 da. verses 16 through 18, sorry, I, got, I lost my track there. Verses 16 through 18, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your, your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than, than, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit. Okay? One of the things we want to talk about is we would need to stop living in fear. Okay? So today we got to do good stuff. And it, what I was going to say is this, is that, that we read that last passage because he points out we might suffer in doing good stuff and face fear. And then Peter says this in verses 13 and 14. Now who is there to harm you? Okay? Let that take residence in your soul. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer, now we're, we're all going to suffer. That's a promise. We're going to suffer, okay? For right, but even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake. By the way, a lot of us suffer because our sake. We do silly things. We do reckless things. We do sinful things, okay? If we're going to suffer, Journey, let's be for righteousness' sake, okay? But if we suffer, look, and, look you will be blessed. What does he say? Have no fear of them nor be troubled. We, today is the day for us, all right, as we suffer to stop living in fear. He said, have no fear of them. Would you say it with me? Have no fear of them. I've been thinking a lot about power recently. I think power, I think so much of life is about power. And, and I know this, I know fear is about power Because in my experience, you know, you may not, this may not be your experience, but in my experience, we so often are afraid because we've given too much power to another person. We so often are afraid because we've given too much power to another person. Now, this was written by Peter to Christians who were living in Rome. These Christians who were reading this for the first time, when he says, have no fear of them, they most likely in their mind's eye pictured Roman soldiers because they were being persecuted. And they were being persecuted, why? For simply longing after good things, trying to do good things. 
the Romans had the power to take these Christians, take their freedom, take their lives. But what Paul is saying is like, don't give them, but don't give them the power to inject fear into your soul. Now listen, it is not a sin to fear. We, as Christians, we're gonna experience fear, but it is a sin when we allow that fear to keep us from being faithful and doing what God has called us to do. And what Peter says to these Christians here about fear, it's about have no fear of them. Do not be afraid, all right? And I think fear is a really a transfer of power. It's about a transfer of power. It's about this. Fear is about me giving you the power to inject fear into my inner being, my thoughts, my feelings, and my heart. And that's not supposed to happen today or any day. I, I'm preaching so passionately because so many of us are just ravaged and enslaved by fear. If you are living in fear, I want to say this, you may not agree with me, but I want to say this, if you are living in fear, you are living in subjection to someone else's power. If you're living in fear, you're living in subjection to someone else's power. And I want us to take that power back today. God commanded us. Did you hear what he said? Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. If some of us are troubled, and we need to take that fear back, what do we know? What is the knowledge we have to transfer that power back? Because if I'm fear, if there's a person right there, and I'm in fear of them for whatever reason, they have power over me, they have chains on me, and I'm shackled to them. And I take that back. Why? Because I believe God is still in charge of the universe. Anybody else believe that? I believe Jesus is still on the throne. I believe that God can handle any situation I face. And I believe that God has all the power in the universe. So today, right now, we listen very carefully to what, what I'm about to say. Today, right now, we need to stop letting someone else hijack God's authority and power over our lives because we're giving them power to inject fear into our soul. We gotta stop that right now. I will fear God, but I will not fear you or anyone else. Now, as I say that, I, I feel like a fraud, right? Because we deal with fear, right? We fear the IRS and fear of this and fear of that and fear you, hard conversations, whatever. But I want us to stand and, 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 and right today, right now, say, I, because I fear God, because I trust God, I'm not going to be afraid of you or someone else today or any day. No more. No more. No more. I'm taking that power back. What did Peter say? Who is there to harm you? And that's an eternal perspective. Because right now, my friend here, Dustin, he comes up here and harms me. He could, you could harm me, dude. You're a strong man. Please don't. But if he harmed me today, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. That's the perspective we have to have. So, so one other thing we need to do today is this, all right? One of the things we need today is we've got we to be passionate, pursue what is good, all right? And we've got to stop living in fear. And Peter also tells us we've got to honor Jesus Christ. We gotta, today, we've got to honor Jesus Christ more than we ever have. Let's, let's resolve to honor Christ right now, right now, today. All right, We read this in verses 15 of chapter 3 of 1 Peter. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Now, we can honor Christ today in a lot of ways, and one of the ways I want to honor Christ is by sharing the hope he has given us with other people. Don't you think that's a worthy honor of his sacrifice? If he died, she didn't have to take him out. She didn't keep, she didn't keep his baby in here. It's all good. Listen, one of the ways we can honor Christ who died so people would have salvation is to do everything we can to help other people find out about Jesus Christ and have hope in him as well. That's why I'm so passionate about what we're doing in this community. I'm so passionate about what we're doing at the Sterling Correctional Facility because I want people to have hope. Anybody here have hope? Yes, we have hope. You have hope today? I want other people to have hope today. Hope is a powerful force. I remember a time when I was losing hope. I was feeling discouraged. And uh, I told you kind of around this story. I've told you, I've talked around this story and told you different parts of it. But let me just share it again, all right? Just parts of it, okay? So uh, it was 19, 1988. Uh, I was working in Yellowstone National Park. I was working road construction uh, from 9 p.m. till 9 a.m. And I was losing hope. It was dark. It was cold. It was dirty. It was messy. And I had not been in church for three months. Now, you guys know I'm a pastor's kid. And my, after my first year of college, 
I, was, I just lost my brain. I was an idiot. I had been dating this girl named Rhonda Smith, and she was so cute, and I loved her so much. So logically, I did what other guys do. I dumped her. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Her brother, who's 12 years old, he came to me as school was wrapping up that year. He said, I heard you broke up with my sister. I said, yes. He said, you're stupid. <laughs> and no lie, I responded, you're right. Because I knew it. I knew I was making bad choices. So I, I spent that summer living with college students in a dorm in West Yellowstone, Montana, with three days off a week, just a recipe for disaster. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't living the Christian life. My parents knew it. They knew it. This is before email. I kept getting letters, and my mom and dad would say, read this scripture. Read this, remember who you are. Read this scripture. And it just, it just bounced off me because I was in a really hard place. And so what happened was, and uh, that's, so I, I got, long story short, I ended up in this Baptist church. And uh, I was living in a trailer. I, I t asked my dad if he could wire me the last of the money I had in my bank account. And he did, you know, kind of like the prodigal father. He gave me my $400. That's all, I, that was a lot of money back then. I took that $400 and I put it down as first and last month's rent for a trailer behind some old, this lady's house. Right? And so I, because I knocked, I went on West Yellowstone, I couldn't find a place to live. So I went around knocking on doors saying, hey, I don't have a place to live. And this lady let me stay in her trailer. All right? And by the way, I went in there and uh, I turned on the radio and it was Huey, Huey, Huey Lewis in the news. Like, Happy to be stuck with you. That's a vivid memory. Isn't it weird about music? Like I remember going to that trailer, the first thing I did was I turned on the radio and that was a song. So anyway, um, so anyway, I go to church, right? So I knew enough to go to church. I was like, I was at the end of my rep. So I go to church and I end up, I end up at this little Baptist church in West Yellowstone, Montana. And uh, I don't remember anything about that day except the, the, the way the preacher ended his sermon. So the pre here's how the preacher ended his sermon. He told a story about this little boy swimming with his little sister and his dad at the beach. And I remember it caught my attention because I was from Florida, been to the beach a lot. So he told this story, and he said uh, his father was swimming with his kids, and uh, he, uh, got, they got caught in a riptide. And when they were caught in the riptide, the father and the two-year-old got separated from the little boy. And the little boy was getting carried out, and the father was trying to rescue the little boy with a little girl under his arm, and he couldn't do it. And so in a moment of just desperation, he said, son, you keep swimming and I will come back for you. But I got to get your sister to shore. So he fought the riptide, got his sister to shore. And when he got to shore, he rounded up some lifeguards. They, they couldn't see the sun anywhere. So they got, they got in some boats and it was getting dark and they're searching the water for his son. It had been a really long time. And he had a flashlight and he was shining a flashlight across the water and they caught two shimmering it was the sun, his eyes. And they get to him and he was exhausted and they pulled his drenched body into that boat and that father hugged that boy and he said, I am so glad you kept swimming. I am so glad you kept swimming. And the little boy said, Dad, I knew you'd come back. You said you're coming back again and I knew, I knew you were coming back and so I just kept swimming. And I remember when the pastor told that story, um, I thought I was drowning. So three months being an idiot, a complete idiot for three months. Just walking away from my faith and just making stupid choices. And I felt that moment when that pastor was delivering that illustration. I'm sitting there and I'd cut lines. It was in the 80s. I'd cut lines into my hair. I'd gone, I'd gone crazy. <laughs> I remember coming back. I'll tell you in a second. So I cut lines in my hair. I mean, I didn't have tattoos back then, but that, that was the equivalent of tattoos back then. A preacher's kid with lines in his hair. So I'm sitting there with lines in my hair, working road construction. I could curse now. I learned how to curse on the construction crew. I learned some amazing words. And a lot of them I learned them because they were yelling them at me. Because I was, I'm a city kid. I'm all working road construction with these old guys. And like, they were like, hey, right there. <laughs> so I got yelled at a lot. So I was, I was immersed in curse words, immersed in the, all this stuff. Anyway. So as he was telling that story, I felt like that boy. I felt like that son who's just drifting away. Whew. In that moment, I resolved, sitting in the back of that Baptist church, I resolved I'm going to keep swimming. I'm going to keep swimming. I'm not going to drown. I'm not going to give up. That was Sunday. Tuesday morning at about 1.30, I got a call that my dad had passed away. Here's how God works. 
because he was still searching for me with that spotlight, even though I thought I was drowning in the darkness. Um, I told my mom, we didn't have cell phones, so I'd call my mom from a pay phone and said, because I wanted to make sure she knew I was a good Christian kid. I was like, hey, I went to church today, and I know she was probably thinking, thank you, Lord, for saving my son. Like, thank you, Lord. So I told her I went to church today, and I told her where I went to church. That's all I said. This is before cell phones and everything, right? So I, uh, I uh, that was, so Tuesday morning at 1.30, I was called to the uh, ranger station. So when my dad died, they spent a day and a half trying to find me. And so they called the Baptist church, finally got in touch with the preacher. The preacher said, yeah, he told me he was staying with so-and-so. And so he walked down to that lady's trailer and said, do you know where this guy Aaron is working? She's like, yeah, I got on the paperwork that he filled out to rent this trailer, da, da, da. So they called that company in Idaho and said, hey, there's a guy working for you named Aaron Chambers. We're trying to find him. Yeah, he's working on the mountains and in Yellowstone National Park. And so it was middle of the night, so everything's closed. So they call the ranger station. And the ranger station, they say, hey, there's a guy working. Can you call the crew that's working? So they called the radio. So I'm, I'm working in the middle of darkness. And by the way, I had just said the F word. I'm, not, I'm just being honest with you. I was in a dark, dark place. The, I, I didn't know my dad had died. And I'm so in such a dark place. I literally stood and yelled the F word to God, towards God's direction. God, it wasn't to you. It was towards your direction. I, I yelled, I think I'm horrified by that. That... I, like literally a day after, I didn't know my dad was dead, but I'm standing there like a little baby living in sin, yelling curse words into the darkness. God's grace is amazing. So I, um, so they, anyway, long story short, they finally found me and I had to ride 45 minutes to the ranger station. I walk in there and they say, you need to call home and that's never good. So I called home, one of the elders of my church answered the phone and he said, hey, your dad passed away. There's a plane ticket waiting for you. And that preacher who didn't know me, that preacher drove me to the airport three hours away and uh, so I could fly home. But all that was me drowning. And that preacher had no idea that he told that story that, that I needed to hear right then, right then. But I was me drowning and God coming after me. And that's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to honor Christ by going after lost people. Okay? We're going to do that. We're going to be zealous. Listen, and now's the time to do this, not tomorrow. We are living in the days of God's patience, all right? T now, today, we're going to be zealous for what's good right now, okay? All right? And because of that, we're going to suffer, right? You're gonna, if you're going to do good, you're going to suffer. Can I just tell you that? This isn't a Christian Hallmark greeting card. This is real. Like, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to suffer. If you try to do good, you're going to suffer. We tried to launch a campus ministry in a prison since, since 2019. And we, you guys who are here, you know we suffered, right? We're not going to live in fear. Okay, we're not going to live in fear. We're going to take that power back from the enemy. Okay, and we're going to honor Jesus Christ as Lord in everything, which includes honoring what he did for us, his sacrifice by sacrificing ourselves. We're going to do it right now. Okay, um, Paul wrote in Corinthians, Today, today's the day of salvation. And some of y'all need to give your life to Jesus Christ today. All right, I'm not playing around. Like some of you need to give your life to Jesus Christ today. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, you can do that today. All right, you can give your life to Jesus Christ, and we can baptize you today. The water's warm, ready to go. We got towels, we got bathing suits, we got t-shirts, everything you need. No excuses, you have no excuses. All right, you can give your life, you can stand over there, confess your faith in Jesus Christ, and you can take the step of baptism today. All right, I'm done preaching. I want you to know, I want you to know, just so you know, God did not send his son Jesus Christ to the cross so you would drown all by yourself. Keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, all right? In just the right time, maybe even today, he'll rescue you. God, thank you so much for delivering us. Thank you so much for saving us. Thank you so much for the hope we have. And God, we're done procrastinating, all right? We're done. We're done saying tomorrow I'll do this and tomorrow I'll do that. Like today, we are today, 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 today. We're going to be zealous for what is good. Today, God, we're going to stop living in fear. What, what can they do to harm us? And God, today, we're going to honor your son as Christ and Lord of our lives. And we're going to serve him, do whatever he wants us to do. We're going to follow him no matter where he leads us. And God, thank you so much for today and every day saving our souls, for saving people every single day. God, we are praising you for what you're doing today. We're praising you for what you're doing today, right now, in this room, with people who are watching online. God, we pray today, 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 people would find salvation. That they would allow you to pick them up out of that cold, dark water and hold them close. God, thank you so much for your salvation. 
Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for today, the gift that today is. And we want to honor it. We want to steward it so well. We pray this in Jesus' name.